Hello friends! Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. This is the Black Dress Diaries. I am Tiara and I am so excited about this video. So this is something that I did not understand because we didn't talk about it in depth in college and so I did a lot of research on it on Google and tried to do a lot of YouTube researching on it and there was not a lot of content about it. So I am bringing this to you because I think that it's really important and if you didn't go to an art school then you might not know any of these things. Now as you probably saw from the thumbnail, I just booked a job at an equity theater which means that I will be able to apply to become EMC. And if you're like me about four or five years ago, you're like, Tiara, I really don't understand anything that you said. And so, let's get into the content. So first of all, what does EMC mean? So EMC stands for Equity Membership Candidate. So it is kind of a stepping stone to get into the Actors Equity Association. The Actors Equity Association is basically the Stage Actors Union. So stage actors and stage managers can be a part of this union and that's the only union that we're going to be talking about in this video because I know that there are others. Um, I actually wrote them down. Sister unions are SAG-AFTRA, which is the Screen Actors Guild slash whatever AFTRA stood for back when they were two separate unions, and AGMA, which is the American Guild of Musical Artists, AGVA, which is the American Guild of Variety Artists, and one that I don't actually know what it stands for. GIAA, I'll put somewhere on the screen what that one stands for because I actually don't know off the top of my head, but we will not be discussing those. We are only talking about the Actors' Equity Association. So as I said, being EMC means you are an equity membership candidate and it is a stepping stone to join the Actors' Equity Association. Now, not everyone who is EMC wants to be a part of the Actors' Union. Not everyone who is an actor wants to be a part of the Actors' Union, and that could be for a multitude of reasons, but it's, uh, in my opinion, very beneficial when you're EMC because you can do work that is not equity, which means that you have a variety of theatrical opportunities you can pursue because when you are equity, you can only do equity things or things that have equity guest contracts. But also the way most professional auditions work that are covered under the Actor Actors' Equity Association, they will have three separate lists of who they will see. They will see equity actors because they have to. They will, if there is time, see EMC actors, and then they will see the regular non-union. Technically, if you are EMC, you are still non-union, so they can still say at equity auditions they will not be seeing any non-union, but you have a better chance of getting seen if you are EMC. Because if the equity theater is willing to see non-equity, they will be seeing the EMC actors first. And if they run out of time, that means that you have a better chance as EMC than you do as regular non-equity getting seen before the audition is over. So in my opinion, it is definitely beneficial to be an EMC actor if you get the opportunity. Now, how do you get the opportunity? This is where my friend who is not a theater person had said it kind of sounds like you have to have a job to get a job type of situation and I thought that that was really smart. So the thing with being EMC is that you have to book at an equity theater. Now remember everything that I just explained about how the audition process works. So the reason that is so difficult is because Sometimes you just aren't going to get seen at an equity audition, but you have to go in order to get seen. So it's a lot of luck and happenstance in terms of if you're even going to get seen as a non-equity actor before you even get the chance to book an opportunity at an equity theater. I'm also going to note that not every theater or not every performance at in a theater that is covered under the Actors' Equity Association is going to be a part of the equity membership candidate program. I know, all of this is really complicated. <laughs> so you could be in equity theater and if you are doing a show that is a TYA contract, TYA stands for Theater for Young Audiences, those are not going to get you your equity membership candidate card. You can actually use those performances as an opportunity to just 
go straight to equity and then there are other contracts that are similar to that where either you choose to stay non equity or you choose to take your card i'm going to put a link in the description box below that will have a list of all of the theaters that are part of the equity membership candidate program because i personally found that really helpful for my journey so more information on emc itself like i said you have to book at an equity theater which is part of the equity membership candidate program and then then you, uh, I am assuming once you start rehearsals, you need to talk to your stage manager about getting an EMC registration form, and then you return that form to your theater and you pay a $200 fee for that. Yes, everything in theater costs so much money. The only positive is that you've just booked a job at an equity theater, so you probably actually can afford to pay the fee, unlike if you were doing, you know, stipend, not equity work. But working at an equity theater just kind of promises consistent money, not necessarily good money if you are non-equity. So just, you know, let it be known that it might cost you a whole paycheck. So that is definitely something to keep in mind. Because again, just because you're EMC doesn't mean that you are not non-equity. You're just like, non-equity with perks and then after that you will get mailed your card i will insert a picture of what one of those would look like because i don't have one yet does that make this video clickbait sorry guys i've never clickbaited before i promise i start rehearsal soon and then what happens after that so if your goal is to join actors equity association you need to work 25 creditable weeks of work so we here in the professional theater industry call those our emc points so you need 25 points a year or two ago, it used to be you had to have 50 points. So now there's a whole lot more people in the Actors' Equity Association than there used to be, but that's a different topic. But yes, so you need to get 25 points in order to be eligible to join the union. And there's a couple more fees and stuff involved in that that I don't know because I am not there yet in this video. I just researched information on being EMC, but that is what that journey is to get there. So you need 25 creditable weeks of work. So that's 25 points, so a point a week. And that is what makes you eligible to join Actors' Equity Association. And you have five years in order to cash in on that. So after five years, all of those points expire. You gotta start all over again. But five years, I feel like, is a pretty fair amount of time to sit there and decide what do I want to do with my actor life. So that is all of my information about EMC from a textbooky kind of perspective. I got all of this information from the Actors Equity Association website and I'll put the link down below just to give them all their credit but I know that some people are more auditory, visual, or multimodal learners so <laughs> I know that for me it was difficult just kind of reading things and being able to just fully understand it. So I hope that that added some clarity. So on a personal level, for anybody who wants to know what my journey was to get into EMC, that's what we're gonna talk about right now. So when I graduated, really the only thing that I knew from career prep class was that you wanted to be Actors' Equity. Like, that's all that I knew. I didn't know anything else except that the union existed that for stage or screen people there was the um stage actors guild i don't think it i think it was two different guilds i think it was sag and then after becoming sag after if you want to know how old i am <laughs> so that's all i knew i thought that all paid work was equity work no that's not the way <laughs> the way that it goes so i learned a lot from going to auditions and asking people at cattle calls questions or listening to people you make audition friends like it's kind of great um you know you have to get up very early to get seen at auditions and when you're sitting there from back in the day when you can get seen in like the first 100 by being at an audition at 7 a.m i learned so much from the people I was standing out in the cold with. I wish I knew their names and stuff, but those people, thank you so much to those people for telling me everything and taking me under your wing and helping me out with all of this information because I knew so little. Anyway, tangent. So once I learned about the whole EMC and equity thing, I was like, okay, well, uh, work is work. I wanna get paid and I want to perform. So I was auditioning for absolutely everything and I am very successful at paid non-equity work and my resume is 
I mean, not to sound conceited, but my resume is really solid. Like, I'm very grateful for all of the work that I have received through all of my paid non-equity work. Like, I mean, this is still professional. Most of them had equity contracts because in D.C., the D.C., Virginia area, we just have a lot of those types of theaters and stuff. So I was working with equity actors and everything and equity stage managers, and I just had such an incredible experience. But... I want to get paid for rehearsals <laughs> and that's kind of not really a thing for a lot of non-equity work and if it is you don't get paid for rehearsals until opening night or opening weekend so this past year I did not audition for non-equity work I was just auditioning for equity equity work and like I said recently it has become a lot more congested in the Actors Equity Association, so a lot of theaters just aren't going to see non-equity or aren't going to see non-equity that is not EMC, and so I was spending a lot of money going up to New York and getting turned right back around, and it was painful. I'm not even gonna lie, last year was tough. About two years ago, I was really trying to emphasize going to local EPAs, and I think that is one of the best decisions that I could have made. If you have a local city with a great booming theater scene then I definitely think that that is where you put a lot of emphasis in your auditions for equity theaters and stuff especially if you went to an art school in that area they know all the directors because they're just their teachers that's just they had a great network so if you have a good network emphasize that city for a minute and their audition season but still go up to New York and stuff because you never know and so that is what I did and it was a hard year this year I just went to this theater that was doing two shows one of which I thought I was very good for and uh, that is not the one, <laughs> hilariously, that I ended up booking, um, but I just, uh, honestly, I just lucked out that it was not a great weather day. There were other theaters that were having auditions, so people had to pick and choose where they wanted to audition for that day, and I chose the one that was not as easily accessible by the train and drove, so that one was a lot less congested of an audition. I got seen, I got asked to sight read, oh my god. Alright, I ran out of memory and I think that's a sign that I have been talking for too long. I'm not 100% sure where I left off, but uh, so anyway, long story short, I'm really grateful for this opportunity that I'm being given and very grateful that I am going to be able to move my career in the direction that I want it to move, hopefully, and uh, I hope that all of you found this video helpful and or interesting and thanks so much for stopping by my channel and have an amazing day everyone if you like me uh, make sure to subscribe to my channel if you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up